In 2019, he was suspended for 20 games under the same policy. He is going to be a free agent at the end of this season, in line to have gotten likely the largest deal for a pitcher outside of Otani. And there is not a major league baseball team who should sign him to a long-term deal. There is not a major league baseball team who should sign him to a short-term deal. There is no way for his agent, Scott Boris, to spin this. He is a recidivist. There is obviously a problem, whether it is with anger management, whether it is with not understanding what you can and cannot do, what line you can or cannot cross. We haven't even gotten to the baseball side, which is what this does to his team, what it does to the Dodgers' chances. And before you ask, I had no knowledge of this arrest when the wait to see yesterday was the Dodgers would not be in the LCS this year. That was only me watching them against the Braves and thinking about their team. When that call comes in to the general manager, to Andrew Friedman, the president of baseball operations, there's so many things that happen when the phone rings. Death, its own subject, when that phone call comes. Injury, arrest, owner angry because of lack of performance. When you get a call about a player, the arrest when it is a violation of domestic violence, and this is me talking, I am very, very strict in my head when it comes to arrest, when it comes to DUI, when it comes to hitting women, or hitting your significant other, it is absolutely unacceptable. And there is no gray area for me. We supply drivers, there's now Uber. If you don't know how to manage your anger, we all have had arguments and disagreements with significant others. It is difficult to be in a relationship. Some people are good at it, some people are bad, most people are average to below. There is no argument, there is no scenario where you hit a woman. I don't think there's a scenario where you hit a man either. I don't like pugilism, but you do not hit a woman. Back in 2019, we went through the entire issue with MLB. Was he charged? Was he not charged? He was not charged for what happened. He was suspended 20 games. In the history of this policy, not one player has been suspended twice. And this policy started eight years ago. The theory is that you get counseling, you get training, you, if you get a second chance, you don't violate it again. So baseball hasn't had to deal with this. So Andrew Friedman gets the call that there's been an arrest. If the Dodgers security people are good, he got the call before baseball even got the call because the loyalty of the local resident security advisors, the loyalty is with the team, not with the league. So the theory is you're supposed to get the call first, then baseball gets the call, then you talk. But forget and regardless, of who got the call first. Andrew Freeman gets the phone call, has to speak to Stan Kasten, and they need to make the immediate and quick decision with their PR person, with the normal statement of, we are aware of the incident. Standard statement. We're aware of the incident involving Urias. While we attempt to learn all the facts, he will not be traveling with the team. The organization has no further comment at this time. No problem, easy. You take it right off the folder inside the phone of the PR guy, you release it, no problem. But in reality, what the Dodgers are doing is speaking to baseball and understanding how quickly he's gonna be put on administrative leave and the likelihood that he is no longer going to be eligible for the postseason. I don't 
want to criticize a team for doing what I would have done, even though I look back and realize that the process of the action that I'm about to tell you sounds terribly cold and calculating. But the speed in which the Dodgers went to what do we do on the field was warp speed. One of the things that we can't talk publicly about is how willing we are to look the other way when things happen with players, how badly we want our best players to be playing, how much we understand that great players are not always great people and you just swallow hard and recognize that they are who they are, they're gonna do what they do, say what they say, but we need them performing. When you know that that decision has been taken out of your hands the way the Urias decision, Urias decision has been taken out of the Dodgers' hands, the speed in which you move to the practical result and problem that you have, and I don't regret that because my ultimate responsibility is to keep the lights on and to keep the team winning, to figure out a way to get through October to get a ring. But in the meantime, when the cameras aren't rolling, the discussions are had about, are we even gonna consider re-signing him now? Scott Boris's agent, who's been very busy given how many players he has who do not perform up to the standards of their contract, up to the levels of their contract, how many players he wants to get overpaid, how many players he wants to place on teams and have the teams regret it, but then come running back when the new players are available. Boris has to decide, is he dropping Urias? Is it Urias or Urias, Coca? I've said it both ways always, and no one's actually ever specifically said to me which way it is. So I'm gonna go with Julio and you're gonna know exactly who I mean. The way Scott Boris looks at this situation is that if he believes that Julio is gonna be Trevored, then that will be the end of him spending one minute focused on his free agency. What I mean by Trevored is when Bauer when his suspension was done and he was released by the Dodgers, he was not going to be re-signed by another major league team. There was no reason for his agent or agents, Rachel and whoever else, there was no reason to spend any time on any club sending any presentation of how great he was, he was not going to be signed. Boris is going to know that now that Urias has been charged, he is going to be levied a huge suspension delaying his free agency and the opportunity, Urias, thank you, and the opportunity for any team to forego any moral compass and go ahead and sign him on the cheap as a quote unquote pillow deal. The pillow deals are meant for players who are injured and trying to prove that they're coming back from injury and they can do it. The pillow deals are meant to provide a player who has not performed up to the baseball card for a period of one to two years. He gets a pillow deal, look at Correa, sign a one-year deal, and then go for the long-term deal after, which he got with Minnesota. But when it comes to somebody who is the first two-time offender, will be the first two-time suspended player under the domestic violence policy, what team would offer him a pillow deal? It's not a question of his skill. It's a question of the opening signing press conference. The reason I like having you form your understanding of this issue around the opening press conference is that's how teams think. What can we say here? It's really easy to say, we believe and our baseball people believe that what you've seen in the past two years is not what you're gonna see. You're gonna see how his greatness from three years ago. It's easy to say in an opening press conference, hey, no doubt he's got an injury history, but we believe in our training staff and we believe in this player and that he's gonna play. All that is easy. A wife beater? What do you say? Hey, we believe that he's not gonna do it a third time 
we know that twice was enough and he's really learned his lesson. You can learn a lesson when it comes to racism. Hopefully you can be educated. When it comes to making anti-Semitic comments, hopefully you can be educated. When it comes to domestic violence, I am very binary. Either you do it or you don't.